Hey, 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 hola, I'm back, that's right, you can't get rid of me, I just keep coming, and, what's that, I keep going and going, there you go, hey, it's another math video, and it's the second part for the reviewing for chapter 8 review test, and we're on question number 9. So let's get started. It says Camilla has a half pound of raisins that she will divide evenly into five bags. Shade the diagram to show the fractional part of a pound that will be in each bag. Interesting. Well, setting this up as an, as an expression, which I do like to do, we're starting off with a half pound. And we are dividing that. So the half becomes our dividend. We're going to divide that by our divisor, which is the five bags. And that's that sized group that we're going to be making. So you look at this and you go, okay, this diagram really confuses me. I've got, was it one, two, three? I have 10. What does 10 have to do with any of this? You think about that. They've actually shown one pound here. We're only going to deal with a half pound. We're only dealing with this right down here, the center piece right here. Okay, so we're going to look at half. Therefore, if you're going to make five even bags, what you're saying then is, is you're saying that you're only going to shade in this much. And that shows one-tenth. And is there a way for us to check our work for that uh, answer, you know, assess to see if our answer is reasonable? Well, we'll think about that. If this was one pound, that's one-tenth, two-tenths, three-tenths, four-tenths, five-tenths. So here's your half. And you're taking the half and you're dividing it by five. So this demonstrates that one half divided equally into five equal pieces, that one is what's going to be shaded in. It doesn't ask us what the actual answer is. Now we can look at it now and say that one half divided by five does equal one tenth. The problem doesn't ask for that, but that is what that answer would be, one tenth, because one half, if you break up a half into five equal pieces, you would get one tenth. Now, 10 says Mrs. Green wrote the following problem on the whiteboard. It says Lisa and Frank shared one third pound of cherries equally. What fractional part of a pound did each person receive? Now, it says part A, it says Molly wrote the following equation uh, to solve the problem two divided by one third equals n. Do you agree with Molly's equation? Support your answer with information from the problem. Well, based on the problem here, and I'll go right back up here, it says that they shared this much. If one-third is our dividend, then it should have been, what Molly should have written was one-third actually divided by two, because what's being split equally is this amount to two people. So one-third is our dividend, two becomes the divisor. So I don't agree with Molly's equation. I would say that, you know, Lisa and Frank, they're sharing that one-third pound of, of cherries, and I need to divide one-third by two. Okay, so the correct equation it should have been one-third divided by two, and then, of course, with our variable equals n, which is our unknown. And there we go with my written answer. Uh, listed above. Okay, part B says Noah drew this diagram to solve the problem. Can Noah use his diagram to find the fractional part of a pound of cherries that each person received? Support your answer with information from the problem. So we have that same problem. So since we already disagreed with Molly, we think it should be one third divided by two is equal to n. Well, it looks like Noah drew a fractional circle. It appears that the initial uh, lines, the solid lines Noah put in were thirds, because I see one third, two thirds, and three thirds. Let me get my magic pen to show that. You see this part right here is like one third, and here's another third right in here, and then there's a third third. Okay, thank you. And now he has divided it into six. And, well, if you had that one-third, and you had dividing it by two, 
that would make sense. Yeah, 1, and then this is 1 out of 6 equal P, because this would be 1 6. So I would say yes, you know, Noah did divide the circle, okay, like we just said, into three equal parts, you know, to represent the thirds. That was the 1 third. Then he divided each uh, third into a half. I can see that. And he shaded that 1 uh, half, he, he shaded half of the third. So he shaded one half of the third of the circle. See, so the diagram represents one third, that's what we started with, divided by two, the dotted line split in two, and so one third times one half, because we can find our, so one third divided by two, then is equal to one sixth. Now, uh, since one sixth of the circle is shaded here, Lisa and Frank will each get one sixth pound of cherries. I'll go ahead and write out my understanding of the problem. And there you go. I know, call me Superman of the keyboard. Okay, let's move on. I believe we're on the next page. Yeah, we're cruising. Divide. It says draw a number line to show your work. Ooh, the old number line. Okay. It says two divided by one third. Let me go ahead and set up the number line. So here I have my number line. I went ahead and labeled the number line. Because we are looking at a dividend here of 2, I went ahead and showed my number line up to 2. Although we know the number line goes on uh, in to infinity, you know, al finito and beyond. Um, and the same thing on the left side. Now it's just to, we're going to divide that. The size of our group is going to be 1 third. So I'm going to have to break each hole then keep this here, into a third. Ooh, I don't want that one. <laughs> That's too funny. Okay, so I'm going to divide this into one third, that one hole, so I can show that one third. And I'm going to do the same over here. I'm going to divide that one hole that we have from one to two, because that's one hole, into thirds as well. Because I'm dividing by one third, and that's the reason why I'm choosing to do that. Now I can go ahead and figure that out. Well, if I'm taking two and I'm divided by one third, I'm saying, okay, there's one size group of a third. There's another size. Here's another. And we just go all the way up to two. That's what that problem says, basically. So that means I have one group here. Two, three, four, five, six. So use that number line. So, so two divided by one third is going to equal six. And I guess I could have used my box to put my number line in. But you get the idea. Yeah. OK, so let's look at the next problem here. Zoe has five cucumbers she grew in her garden. Okay, five cucumbers, I'm gonna underline that. And then it says she wants to share them equally. Oh my goodness, that word keeps popping up. We're talking division. If we're going to take something and share them equally among four of her neighbors. Now it says how many cucumbers will each neighbor receive? Use the numbers on the tiles to complete the number sentence. I like the number equation. You may use a number more than once or not at all. Okay, so our dividend. This is our dividend. This is our divisor. We need to understand that, that dividend is that whole like number. It could be a fraction, but it's our whole piece. What we're taking, what we're starting with, and we're going to divide. And that's going to be the five cucumbers. Next, we have four. Now she says she's going to share them equally among four of her neighbors. That means she's not going to keep any for herself. So that's going to be five divided by four. Now we can also have that expression expression right there written as this. This means the same. So therefore, that's going to equal, we have one hole in there. Four fourths is one hole. So we can say that's one hole. And then what fraction do we have left over? We have a quarter. There you go. I like it. Do you like? I like. Okay, Dora buys one package each of one pound, two pound, and four pound packages of ground beef to make hamburgers. Well, this is like real world problem, isn't it? Real world. That's right, practicing my cursive writing, which I hardly ever use. Ooh, I don't know, I like that. The art looks like he needs some help there, though. Okay, and I don't know what you're making that little square for, but okay, if you want to, that's fine. Now, how many quarter-pound hamburgers can she make? Show your work using words, pictures, or numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and write this the way I would understand this if I were going to solve this problem. There's a lot of different methods you could use. I will use just numbers, four pounds, and I'm going to abbreviate that, 
is equal to, and I'm just going to look at this, I know a quarter pound is one fourth or four equal parts of one pound. Therefore, there's four quarter pounds and one pound. So I could take the four times the four. Now I have 16 one quarter pound uh, hamburgers. Okay, let me just put an H. Next, I have two pounds, and two pounds is equal to, again, I have four in each pound, so it's going to be four times two, which is going to be eight, which makes sense. That's half. So I'm going to have eight one quarter pound hamburgers. And lastly, I have one pound, which is probably the easiest. I did this in reverse, huh? One pound is going to be equal to four one quarter pound hamburgers. And now I'm just adding them all up. I have this up here, I got 12, and then I got 16. That sounds like 28 to me. So 28. I would be adding the 16 plus the 8 plus the 4 equals 28 hamburgers. All right? Now, let me go ahead and put that understanding here. So I'll kind of say it again. Basically, I know that there's four quarter pounds in each whole pound. So what I did was, is I found, I knew that number four, I could multiply with the number of pound burgers I had. And then I simply added them across. And surely there's other ways you could have solved this, but this is the way that it made sense for me. Okay, and there I show my work, I show my understanding and what I did in this problem. Okay, looks like the last one. Adan has half quart of milk. If he pours the same amount of milk into three glasses, each glass will contain how much quart of milk? Okay, now, okay, so he has a half to begin with. So he's taking that half and he's dividing it by three. So let me go ahead and show a little model here. Oop, I went a little bit far on that one. Oops. Let's show this is the one whole though, like one whole number. What we're looking is at is we're just looking at a half quart. Here's my little halfway mark. And it's then we're going to be taking that halfway and we're going to be putting in three equal glasses. Well, and the same amount of milk, I should say, in, into three glasses. So therefore, if that's going to be divided into thirds, then I'll divide that into thirds. Well, now my thirds turn into six. So here's my one whole. This was my halfway mark. So how much is each unit here then in relation to that entire whole? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six. So you can see that each unit is one six. Therefore, each glass will contain one sixth quart of milk. And next problem, nine friends share three pumpkin pies equally. What fraction of pumpkin pies does each friend get? Again, we're starting off with, it says nine friends share. Well, three pumpkin pies, we're, we're, we're taking that number and we're dividing it equally. That should let you know that the three is the number, the dividend that we are dividing. And this is the number we're dividing by. How many friends? Nine. So, of course, we can just write that as three over nine. Now you see we have a common factor of three. So we can divide a three out here, giving us one. We can divide out a three here, giving us three. Now we have one third. So each friend will get one third. Voila, we're finished my friends, my dear jungle friends. And as always, live long and prosper.